In 2021, physics has never been more important in addressing the big global challenges we all face today. Now, APS members from academia, national laboratories and industry are gathering virtually for the 2021 APS March meeting to communicate and explore these challenges together. And we're here to cover it all. This is APS TV. Hello and welcome to our final episode of APS TV, brought to you from the virtual 2021 APS March meeting. And what a show we have for you today. We'll be featuring some of the very best research in physics today from all around the world. A lot of what uh, we have reported on lately has been in uh, quantum technology. You're seeing a lot of really exciting results. I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Jessica Thomas, who, as you know, is the executive editor of the Physical Review Journals. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. So give us a brief overview, if you would, of the Physical Review Journals and why they're so important to uh, the APS. Well, we have 14 journals in addition to a, a review journal and a magazine that is devoted to highlighting what's in the journals as well as other aspects of what's going on in the physics community. And I think those journals are important to the APS uh, because when you think about what researchers spend most of their time doing, it's it's being in the lab, it's doing simulations, it's thinking of creative things in physics. And to this day, journals, as much as they've changed throughout time, they still represent the place where you report and share all of that creative work. So give us a, a little bit of an insight to some of the, the more exciting science that you've published recently. A lot of what uh, we have reported on lately has been in uh, quantum technology. You're seeing a lot of really exciting results there. Uh, such as ways of protecting quantum bits, which are the, the units that store quantum information and make a quantum computer work. We're also seeing ways to make quantum simulations more efficient. And all of this work is helping to bring the reality of quantum computing closer. So Jessica, my final question is, uh, what is physics and how does it keep physicists up to date? It's really meant to be a way to help physicists stay in touch with all the research that's going on, but also to kind of have an awareness of kind of the breadth and diversity and kind of just general creativity of the physics community. Next Kiutra, a spin-off company from the Technical University of Munich, Germany, is developing next generation cooling devices to help researchers both in academia and in the quantum technology industry to accelerate their low temperature characterization of quantum devices. Kyoto was incorporated in 2018 as a spin-off from the Technical University of Munich. Our mission is to support our research and industry customers in their scientific low temperature experiments and the implementation of low temperature applications. We focus on platforms for the continuous helium-3 free sub-Kelvin cooling for scalable and affordable applications of quantum electronics. All our crystals are based on the adiabatic demonization refrigeration method. For users that need ultra-compact cooling solutions, we develop the S-Type platform. For customers that are interested uh, in fast testing capabilities, for example, we develop the L-Type Rapid. This can be equipped with an automatic sample changer that can load samples within seconds and cool them down to millikelvin within two to three hours. I'm convinced that thanks to our great team, our strong partners and supporters, we will come up with good solutions to serve the scientific community and industry. Now, the faculty and students at Purdue's Department of Physics and Astronomy are exploring nature at all length scales, from the subatomic quarks and gluons to the microscopic black holes and dark energy and everything in between. One of the most exciting reasons AMO is, is important at Purdue is that it's a very interdisciplinary field. And so you see many collaborations between the AMO 
physicists in our department and those in chemistry and in engineering departments as well. Staying with astrophysics now, the National Centre for Radio Astrophysics India is a premier research institution in the field of radio astronomy located in Pune in western India. NCRA has an active research programme in many areas of astronomy and astrophysics and runs both the giant meter wave radio telescope and the UTI radio telescope. The National Center for Radio Astrophysics is today a major research organization working in the area of astrophysics globally. NCRA runs two large radio observatories. One is at UTI, which is called the UTI Radio Telescope, and the Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope, GMRT, which is located close to Pune. Uh, NCRA has an excellent set of astronomers as well as the technical team, which together make us a frontline institution in the world for the work in radio astronomy and astrophysics. Astronomers at NCRA study a wide range of objects. For example, they study the sun, how energetic flares on the sun could uh, affect terrestrial communication, for example. They study stars, they study pulsars, they study galaxies like our own, how they form and evolve. Next up, the Department of Physics at Khalifa University is a small but rapidly growing centre for fundamental and applied physics research in Abu Dhabi. The Department of Physics aims to set new standards in education and research that will be beneficial for the UAE and the world. We are trying to find the transformative changes in transportation, energy, environment, water, and healthcare. It exposes them to the industry and maybe uh, future potential employers. We collaborate with a microfluidics group at Harvard University and beamline scientists at Argonne's Advanced Photon Source. Even though we are quite new, we are already connected to the best institutions in the world, and the PhD here will be as good as anyone you can get in the best teams abroad. Union College has a long history of engaging students in undergraduate research. A unique tool at their undergraduate institution is the Pelotron Accelerator. For over 20 years, they've used their accelerator as a teaching and training tool in iron beam analysis. Research at Union College is sort of a cornerstone of the educational experience. We bring our students into the lab and we give them a hands-on experience at characterizing pollution in the environment something that's very timely and has been seen in probably the news lately. Uh, and so here's a project that isn't old or isn't so on the forefront that they don't understand. Here's something that the students can actually get their teeth into and, and take apart on their own. So a Pelotron Accelerator, this is a tandem electrostatic accelerator developed by the National Electrostatics Corporation. It essentially uses electric fields to take a charged particle and make it go from standing still to very fast. And what makes uh, Union College and the Department of Physics and Astronomy unique by having one is that most undergraduate institutions don't have access to an accelerator. So we actually have a bunch of different materials analysis projects that we can offer students throughout their four years here, as well as entice some students from nearby universities and colleges to come and do some research on the machine.
The Centre for Extreme and Quantum Photonics is a partnership between the University of Ottawa, the Max Planck Institute for Science of Light and the Max Planck Institute for Quantum Optics in Germany. Individually, these facilities are leaders in photonic research. Together, they're a world-renowned photonics research hub. The University of Ottawa established itself as a leader in photonics by attracting and retaining the best talents that we could get. The partnership that we have forged with the Max Planck Institute is second to none. It is to bring the best talent of both countries together to try to bring technologies at the forefront. It's a very close uh, collaborative activity uh, between the, the two partners. We have already had over 30 uh, research projects sponsored by our center. Over the next five years, we hope the center continues to thrive scientifically. We've also launched new programs, such as an undergraduate exchange program that will even further strengthen the links between Ottawa and Germany in the photonics community. As anyone will tell you, mathematics is essential in all areas of physics, from string theory to quantum mechanics. Simon's Centre for Geometry and Physics at Stony Brook University provides an environment for mathematicians and physicists to come together to make major contributions to our understanding of the universe. The Simon Centre for Geometry and Physics represents the state of the art in the millennia-long interaction between physics and mathematics. We basically say that do your research, that should be fundamental research, and uh, do not worry about anything else. We also have uh, workshops, programs, and a lot of activities. If you propose a good idea, the money and the resources are there. The centre gives maximum freedom from other duties so that one can concentrate on research. It provides me with a very stimulating environment. Essentially any subject that's interesting to me, there is somebody here who is a world expert that I can talk to. Frequently I sit down with a bunch of physicists and we just start chatting and I'm learning and they're learning and we're discovering connections. What is exciting about this center is that it's too young. So in a sense his personality is being built almost on a daily basis. We all expect to have a very successful future. And that's it for now from our fourth and final show from the virtual 2021 APS March meeting. Be sure to explore all our content from the world of physics on the front page of the virtual meeting platform, on a dedicated page at the APS's website, and on our very own YouTube channel and Twitter. So until next time, wherever that might be, goodbye. <laughs>